Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be USMLE Step 1 High Yield Images Part 6. I know it's been a while since I've made one of these videos, but I've been getting a lot of feedback on the other videos in this series, and I have a bit more of a relaxed rotation this month, so hopefully I'll be able to crank out a couple videos as people start to kick into high gear uh, studying for board exams. So this is going to be Part 6, so let's go ahead and get started. So this is going to be an image of a dacrocyte. And a dacrocyte is also called a teardrop cell. It is commonly seen in myelofibrosis, where the uh, bone marrow within the body starts to become very fibrotic and, and thick. And the reason that the cells are shaped this way, this common teardrop, is because the bone marrow is so fibrotic that as red blood cells are being produced and being squeezed through the marrow, um, they're kind of pinched off at the tip. So they look kind of like a teardrop, also called a dacrocyte. This is a fundoscopic exam showing Drusen bodies. Uh, which are all these little speckled yellow dots here. Um, and this is associated with age-related macular degeneration. Um, the Drusen bodies, what they are, are yellow and white accumulations of extracellular material that builds up in the eye. So if you see this kind of spotty white or yellow material in the eye on a, fundosco on a, on a fundoscopic exam, you want to be thinking Drusen bodies, and the association with that is going to be age-related macular degeneration. The next image here is going to be an example of a granular cast, also called a muddy brown cast. Um, it's, you know, it's brown, it's ugly, muddy looking, that's kind of why it gets its name, as you can see. And the association that you want to make with this is acute tubular necrosis. So if you see an image of this, you want to be thinking about acute tubular necrosis. This image right in the center here is an image of a negri body. So negri bodies are essentially eosinophilic cytoplasmic inclusion bodies. Let me say that again. Eosinophilic, nice and pink, cytoplasmic, so they're in the cytoplasm, inclusion bodies that are found in the pyramidal cells of the hippocampus and Purkinje cells of the cerebellar cortex in a patient infected with rabies. I know that was a mouthful, so let me go through it again. Right here in the middle, negri body. It's an eosinophilic cytoplasmic inclusion bodies. These negri bodies are found in the pyramidal cells located in the hippocampus and the, per and the Purkinje fibers of the cerebellar cortex, and they're seen in patients that are infected with rabies. This image is an example of giant cell arteritis, uh, and really what we're looking at here is that there's a lot of fibrosis. Uh, the, the skinny arrow here is looking at the intima, the, the center of the, of the um, artery, and all of this out here, the thick arrow, is the fibrosis. And right here, this bigger arrow, is an example of a giant cell. You can see, as compared to the other cells around it, it's a lot bigger, um, and it contains a lot more cytoplasm. So if you see this on histology, looks like a, a, an artery, very small intima, but a lot of fibrosis. And you see a couple cells like this one here, or this one here, or this one over here. This is going to be giant cell arteritis, also called a temporal arteritis. This next one is a CT scan, and it's depicting meningioma. Uh, it's a brain tumor that you can see continues with the meninges here. You see the, the white stripes on either side of the tumor here. So whenever you see something like that, don't confuse it for a brain bleed. This is going to be a tumor, and it's going to be a meningioma because of this continuity with the meninges of the brain. Right here, very common picture. Uh, this is going to be apple green biofringens on Congo red stain depicting amyloid. So that whole phrase, this image is very, very high yield. Let me say it again. Apple green biofringens on a Congo red stain. If you hear that or if you see this image, you want to be thinking about amyloid and amyloidosis immediately. This image, what we're looking at is this uh, row of red blood cells right here, and this is called a rouleau. And it, it's basically what I just said. It's, a, it's kind of a, a stacked appearance of red blood cells. Some people call it a, a stack of coins. Um, and it is associated primarily with multiple myeloma. So if you see this uh, in a patient with a macroglobulinemia, um, you want to be thinking about multiple myeloma. But it's also associated with a high ESR, a high erythrocyte sedimentation rate. So if you see red blood cells lined up like this, it's a rouleau. The two things that you want to be thinking about are multiple, multiple myeloma and a high ESR. And taking the next step with that, if you're going with a high ESR, you want to be thinking about temporal arteritis, which we just saw a couple pictures ago. This next image is a, an, an example of a zinc cell. Uh, so this is seen on a zinc smear. 
Uh, and you know, this test isn't done very much anymore. It's it's um it's used to find these kinds of multinucleated Zank cells, but it can't differentiate between herpes simplex or varicella zoster. So we're looking at this cell right here. Um, so the test itself isn't commonly done, but the image and the association with uh, Zank test, Zank smear, is still high yield for the boards. This pitch is a bit more difficult, but still high yield. It's an example of Homer Wright rosettes, and these are circular grouping of dark tumor cells, as we see right here and right here, uh, and it surrounds a pale neurofibrils. So circular grouping of dark tumor cells surrounding pale neurofibrils. And this is seen in two primary conditions, neuroblastoma and medulloblastoma. So uh, if you see an image like this, those are the, the two things you want to be thinking about, neuroblastoma and medulloblastoma. This next image is a CT scan that is a depiction of an aortic aneurysm. Uh, and the, the big thing that we're looking at here is this aorta. You can see the septum here that's dividing the true and false lumen of the aorta. And it's actually occurring both in the ascending and the descending aorta. So it's in both sides of the aorta here. Uh, very high yield image to know. More histology here. This is an example of the histology of glioblastoma. And what the arrow is pointing at is called pseudopalisading necrosis. These are areas of necrosis, as seen by the arrow here, surrounded by columns of tumor cells. Um, and you can see the columns of tumor cells most easily over here. So if you see an image like this, I know all of these uh, neurohistology questions are hard, but you really have to be able to differentiate them. This is an example of pseudopalisading necrosis, which is seen in glioblastoma. This next image is an example of coilocytes. And basically what coilocytes are, are dysplastic squamous cervical cells. And they have a raisinoid kind of appearance. This is a pretty good one right here, raisinoid nucleus. Uh, and there's also hyperchromasia. So you see some darkening of the, um, the chromatin in the cells. And this is pathognomonic for an HPV infection. So if you get a histology slide with this, you want to look at the nuclei, see if they kind of have that kind of raisinoid appearance, have hyperchromasia. Um, that you want to be thinking about an HPV infection with the coilocytes. This is very, very high yield and usually one that students are pretty good at identifying. This is an example of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, FSGS for short, um, noted on an H&E stain. And really, this is a clear image of it right in the center, the pink, very dense sclerotic material running through the middle of the glomerulus, a very common nephrotic syndrome very common histology picture that's presented on the boards. So you want to know this, you want to be able to identify these sclerotic areas and make that association with FSGS. This next one is a pretty hard image, but I've seen it several times on the boards. It is an example of a phyloides tumor, um, and it's a tumor of the breast. I, you know, there's not much information to provide with this one. The best that I can give you is that it has a leaf-like appearance. Um, there's not really any other way to differentiate it on histology, but if you see this kind of looks uh, leaf-like, you want to be thinking about a phyloides tumor of the breast. These here are an example of cystine crystals or cystine stones that uh, is an example of nephrolithiasis. And, and the big giveaway here is that hexagonal shape. Really perfect, easy association. You see something like this on a slide. Hexagonal, you want to be thinking about cystine stones Boom, go on to the next question. This here is an image of senile plaques. So they are extracellular amyloid deposition um, in the gray matter of the brain that is seen in Alzheimer's. So these plaques, uh, all this amyloid deposition, really ugly looking, and it's seen in the gray matter, and it's seen in Alzheimer's disease. This next example is the histology of follicular lymphoma. And the arrows are pointing to aggregates of packed follicles that can obscure the normal lymph node architecture. So this is one of the um, high yield lymphomas that you need to know the histology of. Again, these arrows are looking at packed aggregates of follicles that can obscure what a lymph node normally looks like. This next image is an example of diabetic retinopathy, very high yield fundoscopic exam, and, and everything about diabetic retinopathy is obviously high yield. Uh, and really what we're looking at here is the hemorrhages from damaged capillaries 
that we can see in some of these areas, as well as the abnormal growth of new blood vessels everywhere. If you look at a normal fundoscopic exam, you will not see this many blood vessels usually. Uh, it's just a lot of angiogenesis going on, and if you see that on a fundoscopic exam, the association that you want to make is diabetic retinopathy. The other thing are the cotton wool spots with diabetic retinopathy, very high yield. I believe this is the last picture, and this is more histology, and it's going to be an example of diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. And uh, the, the, the buzzwords associated with this are the wire loop glomerular capillary appearance on light microscopy. Again, wire loop glomerular capillary appearance on light microscopy. You want to be thinking of diff diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. Uh, and this is usually seen in lupus. I know that there's also the association of lupus nephritis with the wire loops, so that's another easy way to remember it. Wire loops, lupus nephritis, also diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. So that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to leave me a like and any comments and suggestions of future videos, and also hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much, guys. T take care and good luck studying.